Episode number 46, Our Man Gulf Coast 70.3 with Craig Clark. Welcome to the Pursuit of the Perfect Race. I'm Coach Terry Wilson, and with each episode, I bring stories of athletes to you that share their experiences at races in order for you to learn how to have your perfect race. We will hear stories from athletes of all ages, abilities, and races of all distances. So regardless of where you fit in, there's something in there for you. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let the pursuit begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pursuit of the Perfect Race. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with my friend Craig Clark about his race at Ironman Gulf Coast 70.3 in Panama City Beach, Florida. This race took place on May 12, 2018. The temperature on race day was 63 and rose to 91, with the water temperature being 75.6. Craig has been doing triathlons for five years, and I look forward to hearing about your race. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to, glad to be a part of this. Awesome. So what made you want to do this race? Um, so originally this race wasn't even on my, uh, schedule for 2018. Um, I was currently in training for Ironman Boulder and, um, six weeks ago from now, six weeks ago from now, I was in a, um, I crashed on my bike and initially when I went to the, um, to the ER, the original diagnosis was that I had several broken ribs on the right side and I would be out six to eight weeks. Um, so me and my coach sat down and we decided that I would defer Boulder to a later race in a year and heal up and then get back to training. Um, but three weeks after the initial accident, I was feeling a hundred percent better. And I just had some doubt that I really didn't have broken ribs. So I went for a follow up appointment with my doctor. And, um, in fact, I did not have broken ribs. They were just severely bruised. Um, so my doctor told me as far as a medical standpoint, I could return to training as soon as I wanted to, um, just on a comfort level. Cause it, it was still, still two weeks after the accident. It was pretty, pretty sore. I couldn't run. Um, I, I started swimming and cycling three weeks after the accident and everything was just real tight still. So it took me a little bit of a uh, time to get back into it. So once I, found that I didn't have the broken ribs, um, Iron Man gave me a chance to defer back to Boulder again. But me at that point, me and my coach said that we thought it would be best um, to stay. I deferred to Louisville in October and um, to stay where I was at. And then he says, well, you know, you're kind of in 70.3 shape. So if you want to test this whole thing out, um, you ought to come to Gulf Coast 70.3 with me. I'll be down there racing that weekend. And it be a fun weekend so that's how i wound up at gulf coast 70.3 nice so who's your coach uh todd judas he's a local guy um here in the new orleans area okay now do you have a previous background in any of the three sports no i do not so when so whenever you started doing triathlons it was like completely brand new for you um well two years prior to me starting triathlons i got into road cycling um just strictly road cycling uh, no races or nothing, just like leisurely, um, different kind of bike rides that they have, organized events. Um, and then two years into that, a guy that a friend of mine that I cycled with said, Hey man, you ever did a triathlon? And I said, no, you know, I can't swim. I hate to run. I, I don't think it's for me. He's like, well, you ought to try one, you know, and just see if you like it. And, um, I did. And after that first triathlon, um, I was almost one of the last last ones across the finish line, but I finished it. And just the uh, sense of accomplishment that I felt, and uh, I just fell in love with it and continued on from there. Nice. So how was your training going into this race? You said you missed, like, a solid three weeks before the race? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, once I, once I was, I guess you could say, recovered from the accident, um, I got back into training, but we Still only had a few weeks to go until the race, but uh, based off of what I did before the accident, um, that's how my coach kind of gauged me and said, hey, you know, you're kind of like in 70.3 shape. So he just adjusted my workouts from then on up leading up to the race. Yeah. Okay. So how many hours did your training max out at? I was training about 16, 18 hours, but that was based off of a full. Um, 
So that that's what I maxed out at before I before I uh, crashed. Oh wow! Now then, going into the Gulf Coast, what was your longest swim, bike, and run workouts? Longest swim workout was a thirty six hundred meter, uh, thirty six hundred yard swim. Uh, longest bike was uh, two hours and forty five minutes with uh, seventy point three intervals and Ironman intervals. Um, and the longest run was um, eight miles on Easter Sunday. Oh wow! <clears throat> Now, how much of your training was outside? Uh, I train about, I'm fortunate enough, we live down here in the south that the weather is pretty good most of the time. So I train, I try to train about 80% outside. Okay. So now do you use a road ID? Yes. Okay. I know a lot of people that do a lot of their stuff outside don't use it, and it's just such a safety factor to actually use it. Well, for instance, uh, I was fortunate enough with my bike accident that I wasn't uh, severely hurt, but in that case, I was training by myself that day, and if something would have happened, you know, the person that uh, came to my aid, they wouldn't have known anything about me because, you know, I didn't have no kind of, if I wouldn't have had it, I wouldn't have had no kind of identification or nothing on me. Right. Now, what specific workouts did you do that gave you the confidence to go into Gulf Coast prepared? Um, He had me do... um. As part of my Ironman training, and I guess we just kind of transformed it into 70.3 training, um, every Saturday I would do a uh, brick uh, with intervals, and um, I would have my 70.3 powers effort and then my Ironman effort. Um, so I just felt, I felt really confident about those. Um, I, was, I was dead on every one of those. The numbers he gave me, I was, just, I was able to sustain for the duration and, and, you know, not totally crash after, uh, I felt good, you know? Nice. Now, were there any days where you just mentally didn't want to train? Yeah, you have those days that, uh, you know, fine, you're just tired or you don't, you don't feel like getting out of bed at 4 a.m. to go do a workout before work. Um, but, um, yeah, you, everybody has those days. So how'd you get past them? Um, I look at it as a... Not that I should complain about training, but I should be thankful that um, I'm able to do this because there's people out there that, you know, for various reasons, whether have a disability or, or are in some type of serious accident and can't continue to do the sport. Um, so I just consider myself fortunate to be able to, you know, participate in the sport. Nice. Now then, whenever you're training, what kind of nutrition are you using? Um, so I use... Um, base performance products i use the um hydro i use the amino acids i use uh base salt um they've come out with a line of uh real bars it's um all natural uh no gmo stuff like that um those are the products that i use okay so when you're not training what are you doing um as far as just general life yeah um i have a um a wife and two kids and I like, you know, doing things with them and family time and we do different things, you know, um, go swimming and, you know, hang out at the pool or we love the beach. So we try to take trips to the beach. Um, just general stuff like that. Family, family okay. life. And you also have a full-time job, right? Yes, I do. I have a, a full-time job. I'm a supervisor for a local contractor. And we do um, underground utility repairs in the city city of New Orleans. Wow. Now then, how big of an issue is balancing life, work, and training? Um, it 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 can get um, it can get hectic sometimes. Uh, between working eight to ten hours a day plus two workouts a day, pretty much, um, and then long weekends. Um, I find that you just gotta you gotta try to make time for family first. Um, but at the same time, your training is, is important. Um, so there's going to be sacrifices that you, you have to make if, if this is what you want to do right. and be successful at it. Right. Now, what sacrifice was the most difficult for you to make going into Gulf Coast? Um, I don't know. I would say if I really had any sacrifices for Gulf Coast, cause it was kind of a last minute, um, last minute race. I talked it over with the wife and. Because it was Mother's Day weekend, and I had to make sure she was on board with that first, that she wanted to spend Mother's Day at the beach. Um, but she was on board with that, and um, 
we just kind of, you know, booked it and went with it. Um, as far as uh, sacrifices, um, you know, you miss you miss some events with your kids or um, things like that sometimes, and that, that's really hard, um, especially like on long training days. Typically, my long days are Saturdays, um, but I try to get up er- extra early and get a jump on it so it doesn't consume, you know, a better part of my day. Gotcha. Now then, could you be where you are in the sport without the support of your wife? No, absolutely not. Um, training for my, I've done two, uh, two foals up to this point and, and mainly like in training for those, um, the amount of hours and time that you got to put in to train for a foal successfully. Um, if you don't have support from your spouse, it's pretty, pretty much impossible or it's going to lead to, um, you know, fights and arguments and other, other troubles. Right, because they really have to not only just support it, they have to understand what it means to you and support that, okay, I'm going to have to pull a lot of slack that they're not going to be doing around the house and everything. Yep, yep. I'm, you know, he's going to be gone tomorrow for five and a half hours of the day training. You know, i got to bring kids to birthday parties and grocery shopping and housework and stuff like that because a better part of his day is consumed training. Wow. Now then, going into Gulf Coast, what was your mindset? Um, I, f- I felt really, uh, really good um, as far as where I was in my training. Um, I felt pretty confident about the, uh, you know, the swim and the bike. I felt I was in a good spot there. I didn't. I was. I was a little unsettled about the run. Okay. Now, when did you actually start traveling to the race venue? So originally, um, originally I was um, set to leave early early friday morning um for the race and drive by myself and do the whole check-in process my wife had a kind of last minute business trip she had to take actually the week of the race so she was she flew out of new orleans early sunday morning and um she flew out of new orleans early early sunday morning and wasn't scheduled to return for Friday afternoon. So we talked about it, and I said, well, instead of flying back home, why don't you just fly directly to Panama City, and I'll leave um, I'll leave Thursday evening after work and school with the kid. So that's, that's what we did. It was kind of like a last-minute thing. I figured it would be better to get on the road early, late on Thursday, and get the driving done Thursday and be there Friday morning instead of driving half of the day uh, Friday. And then, um, you know, still have to do all the race stuff and have the kids with me. Gotcha. Now, how far away from the race venue did you stay? I stayed uh, right about a half a mile. Okay. Now, was this at a hotel or an Airbnb? We did a Airbnb. Okay. Now, once you actually got to the race venue, how was the check-in process? Um, it was your typical Ironman setup. Go in, give them your ID, check in, pick up your packet. Pretty smooth, you yeah. know? Okay. Going into the race, what was your last workout? Um, so I had to do a race brick on Friday. So it was a 10 minute open water swim, practice transition one, 20 minute, um, easy bike, and then tr- practice transition two, and then 10 minute run. Okay. And then you go and check in your bike later that day. Yep. Well, immediately after I did my workout, um, on Friday, um, I, we went, I went ahead and checked it. Okay. So what kind of bike are you using? Um, I'm riding a uh, Quintana Roo PR6. Oh, wow. That's a nice bike. Thank you. Now, do you have digital shifting on there? No, I do not. Oh, man. So yeah. I actually got to tour the Quintana Roo factory when I was in Chattanooga. It's pretty nice. Really? Do you have race wheels on there? Uh, yes. I have um, 80 millimeter um, carbon uh, oars. Okay. How do you like them? I love them. It's really my like uh, first set of nice race wheels. Prior to that, I was just on some cheap, off-brand, real um, more more or less like an uh, I guess an aluminum rim with a carbon shield. I destroyed those things and then uh, I upgraded to the oars. Actually, I do all of my training and every everything on my oars. I don't swap them out. Okay. The day before the race, do you have a certain meal that you try to get the night before the race? Um, not particularly. Um, I just kind of, I'll see what's, um, 
you know, uh, available in the area. I like to, um, I like to kind of stick to a, like sweet potatoes, vegetables with a little meat mixed in there or seafood, something like that. Okay. Now then the day before the race, you're getting all your gear and stuff laid out. Do you have a certain way you like to lay out your gear? Um, I mean, just your typical, uh, transition setup, um, helmet upside down, uh, straps open, buckle loosen with my glasses inside the helmet, um, shoes, race belt, and a hat all stacked together. Um, and then something new that, uh, I just started doing was, uh, I started clipping, rubber banding my shoes to the bike, um, before I, I really, that's like really new. I didn't even practice that in Gulf Coast because I wasn't, uh, really comfortable with it yet. We had just kind of started working on that. And, um, but yeah, that, 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 that's the only difference I would say that's been from my past, past racing. Okay. Now then, what time did you try to get in bed the night before the race? Um, typically about nine thirty ish. Um, if I lay down too early, I'm not, I'm not going to sleep. I'm just going to lay there and stare at the ceiling. Um, so I try to wind it down about nine thirty, and it usually doesn't take me long to fall asleep. Okay. Now then, the day of the race, what time do you try to get up in the morning? I like to be up uh, between three and three thirty on race morning. Okay. Um, and what is your morning ritual look like? Um, I get up, you know, uh, brush my teeth, shave, get the coffee brewing, um, make my breakfast, um, and just hang out uh, with the family, usually if they're with me. Okay. Um, and you know, just go through a normal morning routine. Same same way I would treat a training day. Okay. Now then, what time did you actually get to transition? Um, I got there about five fifty. Okay. Was there any traffic the morning of the race? I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta edit that. The race started at six a.m. Okay. So yeah, not five fifty because I'd have been late. Okay. So what time did you get to transition? It was around five a.m. Okay. Was there any traffic the morning of the race? No, uh, no, just all you know the participants going to the race, but it wasn't uh no 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 backups or nothing. Okay, did you have to pay for parking the morning of the race? No, I did not. Well, that's they good. Uh, told us a parking lot they use directly across the street from the race venue. That I guess they had um, waived the parking restrictions for the day because of the race. That's nice. Mm -hmm. They don't do that in Chattanooga. No, they don't. I've been there. Yeah, it's we had a we got a nice little ticket there while we were there this past weekend. <laughs> not so not so nice when we got done with the race. Oh, we have a ticket. Mm, thanks. <laughs> so you get to transition what all are you doing in transition I'm um, saying hi to you know some of the athletes that I know and just talking to a few of them as I set everything up put my nutrition on the bike uh, pump my tires up um, make sure everything's ready to go okay so what kind of PSI are you using I use uh, 100 PSI okay how did you get to that number Um, just uh, I've kind of just Found, you know, I find that if I go below 100, um, that it doesn't ride as smooth and or as fast. And if I go over 100, um, it tends to be kind of bumpy. Um, so I guess you could say 100 is just kind of a happy, happy medium. Okay. And you're using clinchers, right? Yes. Okay. And you're, you got the 80 millimeter depth wheels for this race. Yeah. Now then, as far as setting up your nutrition, it's pretty much all base performance, right? Uh, yep. Okay. Now then, did you bring your own pump to the race, or are you using somebody else's? No, I brought my own pump. Okay. And this was a rolling start for the swim, right? Yes, it was. Self-seated, uh, rolling start. Where did you seed yourself at? Um, so what me and my coach talk, talked about was to, um, seed myself, uh, slightly faster than I thought I was going to swim it in. Um, that way the pack would kind of leave me and the others, um, w may not catch me or may not, um, but just kind of give me a cleaner swim instead of a boxing match for the first, you know, 200 yards. Gotcha. Now then in between the time that you actually left transition and got into the water, what were you doing? Um, I went for a, uh, quick warm up swim, just, um, you know, uh, warm the body up. Um, get a get a feel for the morning on race morning. Um, if I can, I always like to get in the water before a race. Um, 
is I find that if I don't, um, when the race starts and I dive into the water, it I don't know why, but it takes my breath away. And uh, I think it kind of hinders hinders my start just a little bit because it takes me, you know, a minute or two to calm down or whatever. But I find when I get in the water and get wet and, you know, swim, swim five, ten minute warm up, that always kind of seems to settle, settle me down a little bit. Okay. And then, uh, besides that, just hanging out with the family on the beach. Okay. Now, being that this is a wetsuit legal race, we're you using a full sleeve or a sleeveless? Um, well, I only own a full sleeve, so that's what I was in. <laughs> nice. Now, which kind of wetsuit do you own? I use uh, an Xterra Pro. Okay. Now then, did you use any type of lube to kind of make sure you weren't chafing anywhere? Um, I don't really have an issue um, with chafing anywhere. Um, the only thing I did use lube for was uh, I was concerned because... Uh, of getting out of my wetsuit because I tend to have a problem. Not so much the top, but it seems to get stuck around my ankles. Um, when my coach says just lube your feet up and your ankles and even up your leg a little bit, just lube that up really good and uh, it should, it should slide right off. Okay. Now then, the final few minutes before the swim start, what were you doing there? Were you eating like a last minute goo or anything? Um. Yeah, I was eating um one of my uh, base bars. That I kind of was carrying around with me all morning and just nibbling on it here and there. Um, I wasn't, you know, I had a nice big breakfast. Um, so it's just kind of like a little something to, I guess, you know, uh, hold me over. Okay, so what'd you have for your big breakfast? I do a, um, I do bananas, um, almond butter, and protein powder all mashed up in a bowl, and um, like just eight to ten pieces of bacon. And a couple of, you know, two glasses of coffee. Okay. Now then for the swim course, walk me through the swim course. What does that look like? It, um, it's, it's a beach start. Um, like I said, self-seated every three seconds, an athlete went off. Um, you swim straight out with a right-hand turn and a short swim diagonal to the shore. And then another right-hand turn and, and back in you come. Okay. Now then... You get into the swim. How does the swim go for you? Um, so I jumped in and started going, and uh, right away I, I really I just felt great. Um, I felt like I was gliding, you know, through the water. Um, it wasn't a struggle at all. Um, I just felt really good about the swim, you know, right out the gate. Nice. Now then, you go south, then west, and then north on this swim, right? Yep. So, are you breathing to the left or the right? I am a, uh, I favor my right side. So, um, when I can, I breathe to the right. Okay. Now, on the way back in, then, the sun would be in your face. Did, did you wear tinted goggles for that? Yes, I did. Um, yep, I wore tinted goggles. Okay. I typically wear tinted goggles for most, if not all of my races and, uh, most of my training. I've really never, found it to be a problem okay so you get out in the swim just under 38 minutes how was the time between you got out of the swim and the time you got on the bike which uh as far as what uh well there's obviously sand there because it's a beach start right yes so did you have any issues getting the sand off your feet for the uh, bike ride uh, no I, I come out the out the uh out the water run up the beach and to the platform um and they had uh, like a wash station you could run through, um, you know, wash all this, any sand off, um, strip out the wetsuit. Uh, the glide worked great, came right off my feet, didn't get stuck, and then I uh, ran over to my bike. Nice. Now then, did you use socks for the bike ride? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Did you put any type of body glide or anything on your feet to prevent blisters? No. Okay. So you get out on the bike. How were the first few miles on the bike ride? So the first few miles, uh, my coach said um, a ton of people are going to pass you, um, but just don't don't worry about it. You know, stick to the plan, and it'll pay off in the end. Okay. Now, did you have a strategy for the bike ride itself? Uh, yes, we did, um, and we practiced it in training. Um, I train off of power and cadence. Okay. So it was keep the cadence above 90 to 95. Um and start off at um, build to 150 watts in the first 30 minutes, 
and sustain race power, which was 158 watts for the duration of the ride. And then the last 30 minutes of the ride go to 165 watts as long as I wasn't feeling fatigued. Okay. Now then, how tall are you? Uh, five, six. Okay, so that cadence is really kind of high, being that you're a little shorter than most athletes. Okay. Is is that feel really high to you, or is that about normal for you? No, it it, it actually uh it feels comfortable. Okay. I, I don't, I've never had an issue with it. Um, uh, maybe it's because I'm a um I have I have pretty long legs for what as short as I am, and my torso is torso area is is really short. Okay. Now then, as far as your nutrition plan goes, were you trying to hit a certain number of calories per hour? Uh, yes. Um, I've found that uh, 310 calories per hour works for me. Okay. So you're trying to get about 930 calories on the bike ride? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, for the bike ride itself, what kind of numbers were you looking at on your computer? Were you looking at a three-second average power, normalized power? What were you actually looking at? I was looking at um, on my bike computer. I have cadence on there, time, and um, average power for the interval. Interval. Yeah, well, like the lap lap power, I guess the the average power for that lap. And is so that I, a one mile lap or a five mile lap? No, what I did was for this race, um, and I had tried it out in training, and it seemed to work fine. Um, since it was a I didn't have like, um, I guess you could say, I just kind of used like the first 30 minutes and then hit the lap button and then went, you know, um, the other time and hit the lap button again for the last 30 minutes to try to stick to the to the bike plan. Okay. Now then, as far as the road quality on the course, how was it? It was good. It was uh, smooth, uh, relatively flat besides like one big old bridge. And then, um, yeah, it was it was good, good, good course, flat and fast. Nice. Were you using an aero helmet for this race? No. So um, I was riding in an aero helmet uh, prior to my accident, um, but I destroyed the helmet in the accident, and uh, so I had to get a new one. I had went to uh, a camp not long after the accident, so I needed a new helmet anyway. And um, they had a uh, representative there from Rudy Project, and he kind of mentioned something that really made sense. He said that, like, for us living down here in the South, um, an aero helmet, you know, may or may not be the best thing for us. Um, just depends on each individual person because it's so hot down here. So he suggested that if I get really hot in my training, that I try a helmet, like an actual road helmet um, with a lot of vents in it. Because it'll keep my overall core temperature down, and I may actually be able to perform better than you know. I may be able to make up more of a difference with with a helmet that breathes more than an aero helmet. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I haven't heard that. So I tried it. Um, I got it. I didn't try it on race day, but I had got the helmet, and um, I tried it in the last few training rides, and I felt pretty good about it. Um. And I did it on race day too. I used that helmet with all uh like a road helmet with it has got like thirty seven vents in it or something. I mean it's vents everywhere. Um and I don't feel it I don't feel it hindered me any. Wow. Now as far as the bike goes, is there anything you'd tell anyone to be aware of that hasn't done this bike course before? Um no, it just uh it can get hot. Um it wasn't too hot that day, that particular day, but it can get hot. Um and it can get windy. Okay. So I would just keep that in mind. Now, how long did you actually stay in the arrow? Um, besides the first, um, you know, say ten or fifteen minutes, uh, most most of the ride, except to come up every once in a while, and um, you know, maybe just readjust or uh, you know, take in some nutrition. Okay. So, how well did you execute the bike strategy? Uh, I nailed it. Um. I was spot on with all my numbers as far as kind of what we had talked about, and uh, I had a great bike. Okay. Now then, as far as getting off the bike, how did that go for you? Um, it went fine. Um, came, you know, coming back into town, coming into transition, got off the bike, no issues, and in the T2 I went. 
Okay. Now, did you do any type of transition to kind of prepare to run? Did you get out of the saddle a bit more the last few miles or lower the cadence or raise the cadence before transition? I'd say the last uh, half mile, I sat up and uh, stretched out a little bit. And, uh, yes, uh, picked up the cadence just a little bit, um, not much. It's more of like a higher spin. Okay. So how did T2 go for you? Uh, T2 went fine. I racked the bike um, into my running shoes, grabbed the race belt, and out of, out of transition I went. Okay. Now, did you have a specific strategy for the run itself? So um, for the run, based off of uh, my training before I got hurt, um, we were looking to originally kind of looking at a, a 930 pace on the run. Um, but I was really unsure, um, because of the amount of running, uh, I missed. So the plan we came up with was to do the first mile at the 930, if I could, and gauge it from there. Okay. So did you have a nutrition plan for the run? Um, I used the base salts on the run and then I used the course stuff. Okay. So just the Gatorade that they have on course? Gatorade, um... Towards the back half of the run, I'll uh, I'll do well. I did the water, t- you know, water like an ounce of water. Um, that particular day, by the time I got to the run, it was extremely hot. Uh, you could just feel the heat coming on. Um, so right away, first aid station I came to, I put ice in the front in the back of my kit because uh, I find that on hot races, um, keeping keeping your core temperature down is is extremely important. Right now, then. How well did you execute your nutrition plan on the run? Uh, it went fine. I just, you know, used my base salts every few miles, kind of like I do in my training, and, uh, you know, used the course, course stuff at the aid stations. Okay. Did you have any GI issues or cramping? No, I felt fine as far as, as, far as that. Good. Now then, the middle few miles of the run, how was that for you? Uh, it was a little uh, challenging. Um, I wasn't... Um, well, after the first mile, I, you know, I told myself there's no way I'll be able to sustain this pace for, you know, the duration of the run. Uh, I think it's best to just pull back a little bit and kind of settle into a more uh, accurate pace that I could that I could hold for the distance of the run. Um, you know, six to eight miles in, it um it was a little tough. I slowed down, um, but not not nothing nothing too bad. Okay. So how was the support on the course? Uh, support was excellent. Um, aid stations were spot on uh, as far as spacing-wise. Um, all on Beachfront Road and even on some of the residential side streets, uh, they had crowd support, residents out there cheering us on. Uh, yeah, it was really good, really good support on the run course. Wow, that's awesome. So what was the funniest thing you saw on the race course? Hmm... The funniest thing I saw, um, it was another uh, local team. Well, maybe not local, but Moxie, Moxie Racing. But I knew some of the guys from back home. Um, they were all on the course, uh, all in speedos, jumping up and down, you know, cheering us on and just acting crazy. Nice. Kind of like what they do at Ironman Texas then. Right. Oh, man. So were there any hills or rough terrain on the run? Uh, nope. It was, uh, it was flat, hot, and no shade at all on the run. Wow. Uh, they did have one part that I just thought was, uh, pretty, pretty funny. Uh, you turn into the back of what appears to be some type of park, and then as you come around the corner, you realize that you're running through the middle of a water park. Really? And it's closed off, so, I mean, there's no, you know, there's no danger to athletes or danger to the people that are at the water park, but you're running by people going out water slides and hanging out at the pool, having drinks, and as you're baking on the run course. Wow. I, just, I thought that was funny. Now then, mentally, how hard was this run for you? Um, Towards the middle of it, 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 got, um, it got a little tough just because uh, just I think my I wasn't confident in my training as far as the run. Um, I've, you know, but nothing, nothing too, too, uh, tremendous. Okay. Now, were there any of the spots on the run where it really wasn't supported at all? Um, 
few and far between. Uh, I mean, overall, the course wasn't lined the whole way with people. I mean, there was dead spots where there was nobody, but um, it wasn't far after before, you know, uh, you've seen, seen people or a little small crowd cheering everybody on. It was a... Uh, it was a three loop run course, so it was fairly short. Okay. Miles eleven, twelve, how did that go for you? Um good. Um to me, uh as the closer you get to the end of the end of the end of the race, uh I guess you could say the more excited you get. Um it went it went pretty good. Okay. So the last eight hundred yards before the finish line, how was that? Um, that's always fun. Uh you know, of course, up against the shoot and stuff. You got great crowd support and everybody cheering you on. And then you see the finish on. And, um, you know, that was that was good. That's always a fun time. Okay. Now, after you crossed the finish line, what did you do next? Um, right away, I was greeted by my family, wife, and two kids. And some other teammates that were there uh, supporting us. Um, and uh, I got something, to, uh, some water. And... Uh, Went straight over the the post race party was at a swimming pool, a huge swimming pool at the resort. We went jump in the pool and cool off for a little while. The race. So kit and all just jumped in. Kit and all. Uh, I t- I took the shoes off, but uh, it didn't much matter. They were, you know, I was completely drenched. Um, yeah, but kit and all, we went jump in the pool with everybody else doing the race and just kind of relaxed for a little while. Um, got something to eat and then hung out. Okay. So how was your recovery process? Um, it went fine. I took two days off, you know, Sunday and Monday, no workouts at all. Get some stretching and uh rolling and uh recovery boots. That's about it. Okay. What kind of recovery boots do you have? Uh Normatech. Okay, do you like them? Love them. Now do you have the first generation or the pulse? Um, you know, I don't know. Um <laughs> What do you mean by the Pulse? Uh, the Pulse is the newest generation. It's a little bit smaller where it doesn't have to be plugged into the wall like the first generation. Uh, yeah, I got – all right, well, then I got the second gen- generation. Oh, wow. Yep. Now, looking back on it, how well prepared for this race do you think you were? Um, I think as far as the swim, I was I was prepared. The bike, I was prepared. The run kind of is – it was what it was. Um, I was uh, I was prepared as I was gonna be for the run. Okay. So did anything really go wrong for you? Um, I would say not. I PR'd um at that distance by thirty five minutes. Wow. So I would call that a success, even if the run wasn't you know kind of what we thought. Okay. So if you could change one thing about your race, if you could do it again, what would you change? Um. More running. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So what's something that you learned from this race that you'd like to pass on to someone who hasn't done this race before? I just, uh, maybe not this, you know, uh, say this race particularly, but in general, um, at the 70.3 distance, um, I think it needs to be respected. And I think you need to put the work in if you expect to see uh, good results. Um, I would not suggest someone going out there and attempt to, 70.3 70.3 if they haven't put the work in um, because, you know, ultimately they could epically fail and it may deter them away from it. You know, they may have a really bad experience and it may, you know, they may lose interest in it, you know, because they weren't prepared for it. Well, we've covered a lot about the race. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? I have a pretty, pretty amazing story and I like to share it with people because I, I never come from a sports background. And I've only been doing this sport um, five years ago. And just the different opportunities that have come up that I've got to do uh, because of the sport, because of my story, I think, pretty amazing. So, you know, if people are interested, I'd like them to check it out. How can they follow you or get more information? They can follow me on Instagram at Clark144.6. Um, I'm on Facebook. And uh, also currently right now I'm filming a documentary about my story. Um, the website is thejourney2019.com, and I have a short bio there. And um, I also have a uh, athlete bio at um, it's called chompnola.com. That's a it's a local uh, meal prep service here in town in New Orleans area. 
Now they're they're only local here in New Orleans, um, but I'm one of their sponsored athletes. Oh wow! Yep, and I have a, a athlete bio on there as well. It kind of gives you a little bit about my background. Okay, so without giving it all away, tell me a little bit about your story. Um, basically, um, eight years ago, I weighed a whole lot more than I do now, and I decided to make a, a lifestyle change, and um. I got into the sport of triathlon and um, really just fell in love with it and have continued to grow and succeed in the sport, you know, uh, up to now. Okay. So what's next for you? Um, so next, as far as uh, race season, um, I actually just did a sprint race this past Sunday um, here in New Orleans, a uh, little short race. Um did good, you know, felt good about it. Uh, some may think it's, you know, too short after 70.3, but it was just a, a sprint. Um, and I felt good about it, so I went with it. Um, next up, I got a, another sprint race in um, June 10th in Alexandria, Louisiana. And then I do, um, I got another race that I'm doing July 14th in Meridian, Mississippi, Sunfish. Um, I do this race every single year. Because this was my very first triathlon ever. Really? Yep. So I always like to go back. I always like to fit it into my schedule no matter what I got going on. I always like to make the trip back up to Meridian every year and do that race. Because that that's that's where it all started. From there, I mean, before that race, I'll be into my, I guess you could say my longer distance training. Because I'm also doing Augusta 703 and uh, then I'll be back in Louisville on October 14th doing Louisville for a second year in a row. Nice. Well, I'll see you at Louisville then. Nice. I'm not doing the race, but I'll be up there for sure. Okay, cool. Coming from someone that's been bigger than lost the weight and then got in shape, what tips would you pass on to help someone out that's wanting to get into the sport? It's going to be extremely hard at first because um, if you're carrying a bunch of extra weight, it's, you know, extremely hard at first because of the extra weight that, that makes it 10 times harder. But if it's something you truly love and enjoy to do, uh, just stick with it. And um, nutrition, not just race nutrition, but general nutrition is uh, extremely important. I don't uh, I don't believe in a word. I don't believe in words like diet or stuff like that. Um, it has to be a lifestyle change if, if you really want to see results and success with it gotcha so i only have one more question and that's what's your definition of a perfect race definition of a perfect race um would be any race that you do and you finish uh you get across the finish line without any issues um you may not always uh meet your goals or expectations but at the end of the day you know as long as you finish and uh, we're able to complete it, uh, I would say that's a successful race. That's great. Now, I just want to take a moment and thank you for your time. I've enjoyed hearing about your race, Craig. I look forward to following you in the future. Again, if folks want to follow you, how can they follow you? Um, they can follow me. I'm on Facebook um, as Craig Clark, Instagram at Clark144.6. And I'm all, like I said, also, um, if you want to learn a little bit more about me, you can uh, look up my athlete bios at thejourney2019.com and chompnola.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I've enjoyed hearing about it. All right. Thank you. It's been fun. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you were able to learn something from today's episode. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to see pictures from this athlete's race, learn more about who I am, what I'm doing, or be on the show yourself to share your story, check out my website at CoachTerryWilson.com. Until next time, continue the pursuit.